Yes, please. Thank you. My name is Lai A Ng. I'm from the university. I have two questions. One for uh, Imam and Pastor, but the others may also wish to respond. Um, and this is about uh, interfaith dialogue. Um, there, there are some people who say stay away from theological discussions uh, because you always end up fighting over whose book is better or you know interpretations. But there are also some people who say you cannot not talk about theological issues. I'm just wondering what both of you think and whether both of you talk about theological issues. Uh, the other question is for Cherian. Uh, it's about freedom of speech. Um, how shall I put it? Um, especially in the media. Uh, maybe I could, I could go by way of example and see what you think about this. Uh, I recently uh, edited some chapters for a book on uh, religious diversity in Singapore, and in one of the chapters, there was uh, a discussion about how one particular, in one particular religion that was very aggressive, um, uh, certain members took it upon themselves to uh, go to other to, to, to the sites of other religions and to pray for the downfall of that particular site or for the downfall of that particular religion. And I got into a big argument with both the writer and other friends who thought that there should be absolute freedom of speech. And I said, no, if I had that down and th they would be named, the places would be named, uh, that could be disaster and I can't handle it. Is what uh, Imam said, think, glo think global before you act local. So I'm just wondering in Singapore's context or in the context of today's highly interconnected world, uh, what's your idea of practice of you know, freedom of speech? Thank you. Okay. Perhaps uh, Pastor and Imam can answer the first question on theological discussions. Uh, I think it's very, very interesting. There are different levels and different stages of dialogue. And you need to take them in different levels. And that's why first there are different layers. The first is the theological dialogue. The second is dialogue of life, which is around issues that affect humanity, social issues. And the third level is dialogue around what we call policies that affect the other. And the fourth one is dialogue about what we don't agree and we will never agree upon. Very often we do organize Tea Party dialogue. We call it Tea Party dialogue. Some will call it soft spot dialogue. We usually do dialogue on areas we agree, our common bond, the social issues. We always talk about them, but we don't want to talk on the real, one of those core issues. And before you go to theology, what we always say is we do all. But before you go to theological dialogue, it means you have to know who you are, what you represent, what you stand for. What is the theological standpoint for you to engage? For example, as a Muslim, you don't engage in any activity without knowing the framework from your scriptural context, from the Quranic context. For example, I'm here. You ask me, why am I here? I will say, Allah has told me in the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya Alul Kitab, Ta'ala ila kalimati sawa umbaynana wa baynakum, an la ta'abudu ila Allah until to the end of the verses. That says, oh, there's a scripture in Quran chapter 3, verse 64. That says, I should engage in dialogue with people of the book, Muslim, Christian, etc., and people of faith, including others of faith community. And it even teach me how to engage in the dialogue. That I must dialogue with them in the best way. Because, in for God knows who is on the right or on the wrong path. It's not for me to condemn, but to dialogue with them, to reason along on the issues concerning our well-being or staying together. So therefore, before you engage in dialogue, you must know, have a constituency. You must know your constituency. You must have a good knowledge of your own religion. Because it's about sheer values. If you ask me why, I need to ask you why, and you need to tell me from where you are coming from. So that it's not just, uh, I just feel, you know, uh, I feel that. Uh, <laughs> uh, why are you doing that? Can you give me a contest? 
no contest, nowhere from, then you are missing the track. So when you know your basis, then we can now go into the second level. Because I have my own truth. In the Dina, in the Lahi, al Islam. The only religion in the sight of God is Islam. So I have a principle that says my own truth is the only truth. I know any truth elsewhere outside my own box of my own truth. I have the whole truth. Others may have half truth. And if you meet the, him, he will say, Jesus Christ say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one go to the Father except by me. And he hold to that truth, which is his own truth. So therefore, in dialogue, if you are going to theological dialogue, we have this framework that is a wall that show a barrier of how to go, where to draw a line. I know my safe zone, he know his safe zone. However, even though I have my own truth, he has his own truth, then there's another verse from the Quran that says what? On the suite of good neighbor. Collaborate with others in ensuring goodness and good virtues in the society. These others are not only Muslim, they can be Jews, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Shinto, Confucian, Taoist, Zoroastrian, whoever. Collaborate with them in doing good to humanity. But never collaborate in any vices, in the part of vices and evil. Don't collaborate, don't collaborate with anybody. This is the Quran. So there he say, I have my truth, but in other aspects he say, I need to collect with the others in order to promote that world. So here you can see, on the theological dialogue, we need to have it. And you need to do theological dialogue when you are matured in your contest. Because it's ability to know, so that you will know not when not to hurt the other person. In fact, we've written a book called the pastor and the imam responding to conflict. This is the imam and the pastor in the documentary. <laughs> but before that, there is the pastor and the imam responding to conflict. And we have 75 areas of dissimilarities. An area of similarities, when you remove the test of 75 topics, if you remove the test, when you are reading the Quranic, you thought you are reading the Bible. When you are reading the Bible, you thought the Quran is talking about moral ethics and moral values. Then there are 25 areas of dissimilarities. Either a Muslim and a Christian would never agree. And when they cross the line, the Muslim have ceased to be Muslims. When the Christian cross the line, he ceased to be Christian. And that's why we say there's no polite dialogue. Be true to your religion and to yourselves. Where we walk, let's walk together. Where we are differ, yes. By virtue of his, the tallest, I'm the shortest, physically we are different. <laughs> So you can judge from that context to say, yes, we need to live with those differences. Because that's what enhance our humanity. Thank you very much. Uh, may I also add to the fact that we must not encourage young people to do this. Because their temperaments and their disposition is very flexible. And they may not be able to contain when we go to serious matters. These areas of this court, as we know, is like ache in the back. And I'm glad there are many massage, massaging uh, organizations here in this country. <laughs> I see coming for your massage, massage. <laughs> so keep massaging the differences and keep talking about them. It is not about compromising. It is about accepting. Accept that we differ and we cannot change those differences. And we have to work with those differences, but create space for the other. That everyone holds your truth. If there is a gate somewhere where they will check who has the truth, the gate master will pass in those who have the truth. And those who do not have the truth, the gate master will say, go back. But we don't know who keeps that gate. But in the hereafter, if there is a hereafter for your faith, depending on what is your persuasion, we believe we should compete in doing good. The competition is how good am I? How better am I? What can I do to help you? Better than talking about the differences, let's walk around the common good for all. There is this word, the golden rule. Do for others what you want others to do for you. And so we will have peace. 
follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man can see God. That is what the Bible says. Follow peace with all men and women inclusive, without which you cannot go to the heaven that you are asking for. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ayn, for that very uh, interesting question. Um, I mentioned in my uh, brief remarks that I think part of the uh, formula for Singapore's uh, religious uh, harmony has been uh, a certain amount of censorship even uh, to protect the feelings of religious groups. Um, I think this has been part of the, uh, the formula in the past. I don't necessarily think that it is the right thing to rely on in the future. Uh, for part for two reasons, um, one is that uh, f a certain amount of freedom of speech and frankness is actually necessary uh, even for religious groups, uh, and in fact, there's a there's a good reason why historically uh, freedom of speech and freedom of religion actually are treated as almost the same thing, because how can you express your yourself religiously if you don't have freedom of speech? So, for example, in the U.S. First Amendment that people always think of as uh, defending press freedom, actually the same First Amendment also defends uh, freedom of religion. It's of press and religion because uh, it's seen as the same thing. Uh, so in, in uh, a contemporary context, for example, uh, if a religious minority feels uh, persecuted by another group, uh, how can it... Uh, um, uh, redress that if it does not have the freedom to raise that issue, right? So freedom, uh, the lack of freedom of speech can become a form of religious persecution. Um, so that is one uh, reason. The second reason why I think uh, we should rely less and less on state censorship uh, is because that is, you know, what I called uh, sort of a vertical response, right? We have a problem, therefore we uh, ask the authorities to solve it. Uh, and I think that becomes a kind of a habit, a kind of dependency, uh, which we are pretty stuck in. I would much rather see, um, you know, if there's no threat of violence, that uh, citizens um, uh, rely on each other to solve problems. Uh, I disagree with the very Singaporean habit now of always making a police report when we feel offended by something we see on the internet or something being passed around. Uh, why not save the police some trouble? Right? There are other things to uh, look out for, including gangs with slashing, you know, slashes and staring incidents and so on. Uh, if it's not going to cause immediate um, uh, violence, why not talk it through a civil society response rather than a police response? Um, I should clarify, though, that when uh, what, I, what I'm referring to is state censorship. I do not see the reduction, the the opposite of a reduction of censorship. Uh, let me get that right, sorry. A reduction of censorship does not necessarily mean an increase in irresponsible speech. Right? What we should see is a reduction in censorship, a reduction in state action, but an increase in our own sense of responsibility. Right? So freedom and responsibility can come together. Uh, so in fact, in, in the example that you raised, uh, you weren't really talking about censorship, were you? I, I, you were talking about the judgment that an editor uses, right? all things considered, to decide whether something should be included or not. Not because the government is there to lock you up if you don't, but because as a thinking editor or a thinking citizen, you believe that maybe we shouldn't say this because there might be likely consequences. And I'd much rather see Singapore move towards that position, right? where people um, uh, who have the power over words, especially uh, newspaper editors, book editors, and so on, uh, not out of fear of government, but just out of a sense of responsibility, feel that maybe in this case some restraint is better. Yeah? And that, to me, is the direction that we should be heading towards. Yeah. 